Y'all stay tuned. Today is going to be a huge day for Cotton Top 3. I'm at the hotel. Y'all look at this. All right, so I told y'all today was going to be a big day. Y'all have seen this old saw in tons of my videos right here. So I'm going to show y'all something here right quick. Let's show y'all what we got right here now. Y'all look at this. One of the new 572s from Hush Varna right here. So I've got Keel here from Hush Varna. Tell, tell us who you are, Keel. So my name's Keel Zorno, commercial sales manager for Hush Varna North America. Um, out here with Tim, big fan of your channel, and uh, <laughs> thought I'd bring you a brand new 572 for you to try out. <laughs> These are not for sale in the United States, correct? They have not yet hit the dealer channel. Not Looking yet. Looking at uh, February. February of 2019. Uh, Keel contacted me. He's actually the one who sent me the, the caps that I gave away here a week or so ago. He contacted me, first sent me some caps, and uh, talked to him via email. And then uh, two weeks ago, a week ago or so, he emailed me again. And he said, we're going we're gonna to send you a saw. But we're not going to send it to you. We're going to bring it to you. So he drove all the way down from Chicago yep, last, last night, night. Last night, met you at the hotel this morning. Yep. To bring a saw out here. So we're going to stop this video and we're going to get out here and we're going to run this thing. We're going to cut down some trees. We're going to show y'all how this thing works. This is a completely different ball game for Hush Farner and for saw hands. It has auto tune on it. And we're going to talk about all that stuff. But first, we're going to run it for a little while. So y'all hang tight. All right, so I've cut a couple of trees down with it right now. Just kind of getting a feel of it. And we're going to put it on camera now here. And uh, let y'all watch.
I've cut down what six six trees with it. Y'all seen some of them on the video. This is my first time to run one of these uh, auto tuning saws like this right here. Uh, we're gonna get in. We're gonna get into it. Kill is gonna explain some of the auto tune, but I want to give y'all my first thoughts on it. Uh, it's it's different. It's very different. It's different in a good way. One of the biggest things about it is is the the balance, the anti vibration. It's not like a. Uh, it's hard for me to explain it. It's not like the the 372s or the 395, where you're feel where you're feeling that feedback through the saw. It's it's going to take me a little bit to kind of get used to that, but it's it's very it's it's different feeling it feeling something that that's smooth that's not it's that's so powerful. Yeah, that's so powerful. Uh, very very responsive. I like that crunch. Uh one thing that, that they changed on it is the everything's all in this one switch. Your keel, your half throttle on it, what I call half what do you call it? What do y'all call it? Half throttle. Half throttle. Half throttle. So, and then your your keel right here, you just push it down to kill it and it pops back up. So uh, you pull out to go to full choke right there. And when the saw pops in, then that's half throttle. And then when you pull it, then it releases it down to the run position. I like that where you don't have two, two turn it things on. on it. Everyone who's had a 372, the first time you forget to turn it on, mm -hmm. you pull it quite a few times. Yes, <laughs> that's right. The compression release is in the top, right here on the top, right there. Just a simple button right there. Very easy to pull and crank. It's got a purge button on here, yep. which is not a primer. No, a primer dumps fuel into the carburetor. Purge is just bringing fresh fuel. So I'm gonna explain it kind of quickly here. You can purge this, you can pump it a thousand times, and you're not gonna flood it. You're not gonna pump fuel down into this carburetor and it'd be a pain. The one thing that he explained to me, and I've had this happen, anybody that's run a saw very much knows this right here. During the hot summertime here in the south, vapor lock, oh my gosh, running out of gas. But when you pump this purge right here, it will actually mix the fuel. Bring in fresh cool fuel from the tank when you just filled up, up into the carb there and makes it a hell of a lot easier. So, so it's, it's supposed to crank now if it's hot summertime because I've had some times where I wanted to throw a saw and then run over it and I might not have still been happy right then. <laughs> so that's the, all right. So let's get into, I'm gonna let you take the show now. Explain right. to us the auto tune on this thing in so, simple terms. Auto tune basically adjusts for temperature, humidity, elevation, and fuel quality to give you the optimal um, air fuel ratio, meaning your saw is gonna run at the uh, optimal position every time. Uh, leads to consistent starting. Um, you take a saw in a hot, humid area. Um, the next day, you got a job in the mountains somewhere, and it's cold. Um, the saw will adjust for that. One of the other things it adjusts for is a dirty air filter. I'm not saying that you shouldn't clean your air filter, but uh, Auto Tune will adjust if that's packed full of sawdust in there. Um, your saw is still just going to run just fine, get you through the day. Explain to us what you told me a while ago. If you run a saw all day long, you're talking about the air filter, how much air does that saw digest in a normal day? So a 70cc saw, saw this class, will consume roughly 8,000 gallons of air in a given day. That's so I can't breathing. stress how important air injection is and how important a high quality air filter is. The air injection is what sold us on Hush Varner saws back in the very early 90s. We had been running another brand for years and they had gotten to where they were kind of poor quality. I mean, you could literally be cutting a tree down and parts would fall off the saw. We went to a show and they had the 262s with the air injection. And the guy there from Hush Varner took that saw and Jim packed the recoil cover right here full of sawdust as much as he could pack in there 
he snatched that thing, cranked it, run it, cut some cookies off a log, and we pulled the air cover off. He said, boys, y'all come here and look at this right here. Pulled it off, and none of that stuff, it, uh, it went into the air cleaner right there. That sold us on Hush Varner. At that time, we went ahead and bought three of those saws then, of the 262, and then we eventually converted over to the uh, 372 size, and that's what we've had ever since, and included the 394 in that mix too. But you can see, it don't look, it really don't look any different, but Kill and I were talking on the phone yesterday as he was coming down. You can take, a 70cc saw is not a small saw by no means, but it's not as large as a 395. You can take a 70cc saw, and if you've got it tuned right with the right chain, you've got it sharp, you can cut anything you want to. You don't have to have a 100cc saw or anything like that. That's what I do on my saws is tune them. I tune them to where they run per perfect, and then I work on my chain to make them cut like I do. The thing that I like about this that I've been crazy about, and I was going to buy one of these when they come out, but y'all kept saying it's going to come out, and then I, and then y'all would move it like a couple of months. I'm like, over here about to pull my hair out because I wanted one of these saws. I wanted, I wanted one because I wanted the auto tune. I want something that's going to tune for me that I don't have to play around with. You don't have on. to adjust it. Uh -uh. It's like, it's almost like a fuel injected car how you jump in it on a cold morning and you crank it up it's ready to drive and some of the the benefits here are that it not only adjusts at the top range of rpms but it also adjusts in the mid and low uh, which helps you out before to calibrate auto tune if your saw was running rough what you'd have to do is uh, take it full throttle and rip it through a log from anywhere from three to five minutes and it'll adjust uh, but it had to be full throttle Whereas this saw will adjust in the uh, mid and high ranges. So a couple other things while you got the cover off there. We added a lot of heat abatement here. So this saw has 20% greater cooling capacity than that 372. And some of the features of that are right here. You got the flywheel and as that air comes in, it's sucking it through here and it's pushing it. Now the 372 had the cylinder straight up and down. If you turn the cylinder back, it gives it greater cooling capacity over those fins. You can see how the saw all looks without the cover on it right there. What it looks like. The bottom side of it. So y'all check this out. It won't fall off. Captive bar nuts. Captive bar nuts. <laughs> the chain tensioner is still right here on the side cover. You can you can tension it. Right there. But I really like that right there. That is very, very cool. Anybody that's ever run a saw has lost one of those right there. At some point in their career, at some point in their career. First time to take this cover off. So it's going to take me just a second. There we go. Just like that right there. One thing I like, I had a guy give me some of these at a meet and greet that I did. He gave me some of those flip up caps. Uh, that was a tough design on the earlier Huskies, like the, the, 372. the 372s. Yes, that those got talked bad about often. These right here make it a lot easier to grab with your uh, with your fingers or with gloves. And they've also got in here too, integrated in. They got a place where you can put your screens to tighten them and loosen them. And it's like that on both the bar and chain oil right there on that. But let me ask you this, fuel consumption. Is it comparable to the 372? Is it less, is it more, or what do we expect out of that? It's gonna be roughly 20% more fuel efficient. So it's a more yeah. fuel efficient. Yep. 
Is that because y'all got it choked down, not letting it breathe, or? No, I, I can't tell you all the ins and outs of it. That's, but our, that's secret, top secret top stuff. Top secret, but uh, our engineers have figured out a way to meet EPA um, standards and keep it more fuel efficient and pull more por more power out of it. And, ha and that's what I was going to say, you got the power out of it. So we say 12% increase in cutting capacity. Um, for someone like you, running these all year long, uh, what they calculate it, rough calculation, is uh, one to two week savings. One to two week savings. So, let me explain something to y'all too right here right quick that uh, Kiel hadn't brought up that I'm going to because as being, you know, an operator of a business here and stuff like that. What's this all retail for right here? Thousand bucks. Thousand bucks, roughly a thousand dollars people are really bad about if i say i bought five of these saws i got five thousand dollars in them. yep i give them the saw hands oftentimes they want to start adjusting on the carburetors because <laughs> they they think that there's a fine art to tune in the carburetor yes. on a chainsaw just that much is a difference between leaning it out too much burning it up and it running the way it's supposed to yeah you burn it up you just lost the saw Thousand bucks. Thousand bucks. Day on time. All that stuff right there, right there. From an owner standpoint, now there's nothing to you. Can't stick a screw nowhere in this saw right here to adjust anything. So that right there eliminates that. The saw is running. It's continually. It's mapping things way quicker than we could ever even think about and taking into consideration constantly adjusting itself that's right so we're gonna we're gonna run this saw a little bit more here we're gonna play with it i'm gonna do some lemon with it i'm gonna top top one of these trees here with it and then uh what y'all can watch how it runs as i run through a couple of these tops right here shines at is <laughs> that that was that was pretty impressive right there there's no no lag whatsoever This saw is brand new. Y'all know how they are when you first buy them and you're trying to, they're trying to break in and all. Uh, <laughs> uh, the rev on it is crazy. So I'm gonna cut down, I've cut down six trees, topped a couple. You can tell it's starting to 
just in that little bit it's starting to seat in a little bit and pull showing up and uh so i want to cut one down down with it and see what see what it does here right quick Yeah. <laughs> 
to run out of gas. <laughs> it's got to be about out. You can look on the translucent on the back. I'm not used to that though, dude. It looks like it's still got it in there. <laughs> I think it's still got that much gas in the daggone tank. Holy cow. <laughs> I tried, yeah, I tried. That's what people want. They want to see the dog run out of it, man. But that's what it's meant for right there. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Run the piss out of it. Yeah. Seriously. All right, come over here, Kyle, with me, kill with me real quick. Come over here with me. What do we want to talk about? Yeah, we're just gonna get down right here and we're just gonna we're just gonna talk. So we're gonna do just kind of get down right here with me. Oh yeah. Screw that on, I'll be in the head all over my legs. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. 
All right. We're just going to talk about this all for a little bit. Y'all just saw me run the crap out of this thing. Oh, I don't I don't have no no mercy. Y'all notice when I was ripping with it there the it never clogged. They actually opened this up more on the bottom so if you're doing something like that it won't clog up with you. And uh cuz I never stuck my hand down there and had to had to dig it out or anything. No. They got a lot of power. 5.8 horsepower, 14 and a half pounds. I mean it is right what I want somebody to do is is look through when I was cutting these cookies off. Count how many cookies I cut off of it. Count how many cookies I cut and cut and get the time duration between it, how quick it went. Uh, that's probably an eight, eight inch cookie right there or so what it was. And uh, of course this is pine. I wish I had some, some big hardwood, but y'all are gonna see this thing run more than just this video right here. Uh, uh, so, cause when when kill leaves the saw staying so, <laughs> so it's gonna be uh i've got some plans awesome. I've, got, I've got some plans I'm excited and, uh, to see what you do with it i'm gonna uh i'm gonna make Hus morning proud and stuff so uh but uh very cool opportunity to uh be able to Thank have you. you come down and uh Thank you for the opportunity to let us come out and oh, yeah. show our latest and greatest to you. Yep, that's right. That's right. And uh, very, very cool. The the technology is really, really moving. It has really moved in the last 10, 15 years, big time. And it's just with the electric stuff that's coming on, y'all got electric saw. Got a and, battery uh, top handle saw and a battery rear handle saw as well crazy crazy stuff that's coming down the pipe right now and all it does is help you at the end of the day whether it's efficiency whether it's consistent starting whether it's less tuning mm -hmm. you don't have to tune the saw yes. uh, whether you're not cleaning out the air filter as much with the air injection uh, whatever it is whether you're not fueling up as much um, they're all designed to help you at the end of the day become more efficient more safe um, and get more done you notice when I was running it never changed the saw never never changed what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut another tree down right here and I'm gonna throw it across one of these trees to where it'll hang it up in there and I'm gonna run it till it runs out of freaking gas either it's gonna run out of gas or I'm gonna die one of the two I'm not sure which but <laughs> I'm gonna run it because I want to hear what it does yeah. when, it, when it goes to run out of gas that's, that's what I want to do yeah. and then I want to fill it back up and immediately crank it I want to see if it'll crank yeah Let's That's do what it. We're going to put it to the test.
Yeah, it's hard to get over here. That's like 395 compared to right there, man. Alright, we're going we're gonna pay a drug, man. Alright, Hill here we go. expect that thing to crank right then first pull first pull <laughs> never expected that that's crazy that little purge ball comes in handy that's crazy especially on a hot day you keep and you know fuel in a cool spot fill it back up pump it full you get a nice cold fuel in there and you're good to go how many times would you crank it and it would have ran lean for just a second before it picked on up and got to run in normal. I think when people get accustomed to these, because I'm a fan of it, I'm not gonna lie. I, the the auto tune stuff and everything. Been so much negative stuff said about it, but there's there's a few of these in the United States, yep. but not many. And uh, that I like it. I like it. And I'm running a 20 inch bar on this one right here. That's what I'm running on it. So I'm gonna run it through the paces. I'm not gonna pull no punches. Man, you can't. I run a dog out of that thing a while ago. I mean, just wide open all the way, pedal to the middle. And that's how I want something that's gonna outperform me, that's gonna outlast me. But I'll say this I cannot believe that that thing ran as long as it did on that first tank of fuel. That six trees, let's see, one, two, three. If I see seven trees I cut down and then all those cookies over there ripping and then all of these right here on this butt cut right here uh, run out but very impressive to pull it one crank one pull and the dang thing crank that's crazy I have pulled dude I, I'm telling you I have invented some cuss words on with a chainsaw before trying to crank it. But the biggest thing that I want to emphasize coming from me here is is the feel of the saw. Whatever they did to take the vibration out of it, my hat's off to them. I'm looking over there at Kill because he's standing right there. But I'll tell I'll tell y'all, Hus Farner. My hats are off to your engineers for taking the vibration out of it. The saw does not feel, it feels a lot lighter, if you will, than the saws that I've been running. And I'm 46, I'm not getting no younger. And uh, that's huge, that's very, very huge. So uh, I'll be back in a minute. So the biggest thing about the 572 also it's just, uh, and I said it in the video several times, 
not feeling the vibration through it. It actually, the saw feels a lot lighter than the, than the older version, which is this one right here, year 2000 model. And it also, with it feeling lighter, it's got more power than this version right here does. So this this thing right here has, has filled some big shoes for a lot of years, the 372. There's, there's no telling how many Husqvarna has sold of this saw right here. And then probably next, my in the big saws would probably be like the 395. Yep. And then, uh, and then now they got this unit here. So hopefully, that it, it it'll just be a workhorse and fill the gap with that uh, this saw right here. So we're gonna let y'all go for now. Uh, I'm gonna let uh, Kill do the do the hinting for me here right quick. So I appreciate y'all very much, very we very much. Appreciate you. And uh, so. Like I said, y'all gonna be seeing her run some more here. So, what I always say at the end of my videos. Later, taters. See ya.